And welcome to MCNA Summer Virtual Hoja. My name is Aisha Nasir and I'll be your host today. Jazakallah Khair for joining on time. Before we start, we will have a couple of announcements while we wait for the others to join. MCNA offers a variety of programs throughout the year. Prime Times are monthly online webinars organized by MCNA. We will resume monthly prime time sessions for September, inshallah. Previous prime time session recordings can be found on our YouTube channel. MCNA also offers YMJ courses twice a year, spring and fall. Our next upcoming course, the end of time, will be starting from September. Please stay tuned for more details. We also have a companion magazine for kids, which is written by kids all across the US. There are two magazine issues a year. If you're good at writing, feel free to send your jokes, poems, stories, essays, art, or recipes to us. The magazine also offers all sorts of fun competitions where you can participate and win prizes. MCNA also offers an annual journey through Quran course during Ramadan. Make sure you like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. It is a great resource to watch our programs and record program recordings. Last but not least, please like and check out our Facebook and Instagram pages weekly for Arabic Word of the Week and updates. All right, let's start today's program with a Tawalat of the Quran, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een Iddina al-sirat al-mustaqeem Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Qayr al-maghdubi alayhim mulat-ta'een Ameen Today's speaker is Sister Muniba Hussain. She is currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in nursing in Atlanta, Georgia. She has a affiliated with in, in ICNA since a young age, including volunteering with ICNA Relief, being a youth for Jordan alum, alumni, and helping with Helping Hand. And also, MCNA teacher is in my hometown, Corona, California. She loves to read, play board games, make jigsaw puzzles, and sleep in her free time. Sister Moniva, the mic is yours. Okay, Jazakallah um, Khair, Aisha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi ashrah li sadri wa yasir li amri. Wa ahlul uqda tamma lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everyone, um, it's so good to see everyone again. I did the Ramadan um, program and it's so good to be back and doing another program here in the Summer Sahaba series. We are currently in our second to last week, so I thank you all for joining us um, during this whole entire series, and I hope you guys are learning um, and implementing the new stuff that you guys are learning in your everyday lives. So today, inshallah, we are going to be talking about two sahabas as we normally do, right? So our first one is Talha ibn Ubaidullah, right? And the Prophet ﷺ said that he will be his neighbor in Jannah. So I just want you guys to take a moment and think, you know, what do you have to do, you know, or what kind of person you have to be to be a neighbor, to be the Prophet Sallallahu neighbor in Jannah, right? So a brief um, in, uh, introduction about Talha ibn Ubaidullah anhu. He is, um, you know, one of the 10 promised uh, Jannah, right? He is part of the Ashara Mubashara, and he is, he was one of the first 10 to convert to Islam, and he is of the famous five who converted at the hands of Abu Bakr as siddiq radiallahu anhu, right? And so he tells the story of his own Islam. So he's from the tribe, same tribe as Abu Bakr, the tribe of Thaim, and he was a tradesman. So he says that he was in Syria when a monk told him that the Prophet Sallallahu was indeed the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So Talha radiallahu anhu made his way back to Mecca and he asked the people, he's like, what happened while I was gone? So they said, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has claimed prophethood. 
So Talha, عنه, when he went to his relative Abu Bakr, he said, have you heard of what Muhammad is saying? And Abu Bakr عنه, says, yes, he is calling to the truth and you should follow him also. So Talha عنه, became Muslim. And if you look at the life of Talha عنه, in particular, the specific characteristic that we constantly see throughout his life is Ihsan right pure excellence and pure excellence in immense like it is a matter of taking one's inner faith and showing it in both deed and action so anhu, he excelled in everything that he did and we are going to be talking about two aspects of his life where he showed ihsan where he showed pure excellence where he excelled in these two things and so one of the first being um his generosity so Talha was of the wealthiest of companions and of the most generous. And when example, the people of Medina were facing a food crisis and Talha single-handedly purchased grain for the entire city of Medina and fed the whole city from his wealth. So, you know, it makes you think, so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you and gives you wealth and you are that generous, what's going to happen? You know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you much more. And that's what we see in the life of Talha radiallahu anhu. He was basically, you know, if you think about it, a multimillionaire back in the day. But you can see that his heart was not attached to the money. And, you know, this isn't just for Talha radiallahu anhu. It, this also pertains to all the Sahaba who were wealthy and they gave for the sake of Allah. Their hearts were not attached to money. And you can see that in their lives and in the generosity. Um, Another companion, Sa'id ibn Zayd, who said that he accompanied Talha radiallahu anhu while traveling, and he was also in his house, house, he says, I have never even heard of anybody who was more generous than him in wealth. He would give money and clothes and food like no one else. So, you know, it's safe to say that uh, Talha radiallahu anhu, whatever he had, he was always sharing with other people. And so... Talha radiallahu anhu was given three nicknames by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because of his frequent charity, because of his excellence. He was named Talhatul Khair, Talhatul Jud, and Talhatul Fayyad. And all three of them roughly mean the same thing. Right? So Talhatul Khair, Talha the excellent, Talhatul Jud, Talha the benevolent, and Talha Tulfayat, Talha, the one who is excessively generous. And I want you guys to take a moment and think like, you know, can you imagine how generous you have to be for the Prophet ﷺ to recognize you and for the Prophet ﷺ to, you know, see that you're super generous, that he gives you not one nickname, but three nicknames? And it's incredible. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he recognized the special trait of Talha radiallahu anhu, and so did the other Sahaba. And the second aspect where he showed Ihsan, or an act of excellence, was during the Battle of Uhud. So I want to take this moment for you guys and ask you guys, you know, what happened during the Battle of Uhud? I'm not sure if the chat is still working. Okay, I think the chat is off and that's fine. Um, so during the Battle of Uhud, you know, we, you know, Muslims lost that battle, right? We were completely outnumbered. We were betrayed. The Prophet ﷺ, you know, he was hurt. He was beaten and he had some of his teeth knocked out. So when Talha radiallahu anhu heard that the Prophet ﷺ was being attacked, he ran to him and defended him so much so that the Prophet وسلم, he would say, you should have seen me on the day of Uhud. On my right was Jibreel السلام, and on my left was Talha radiallahu anhu. So if you think about what the Prophet وسلم, was saying here, Talha radiallahu anhu was the last companion around to defend the Prophet وسلم, during the battle of Uhud. There was a point where an arrow was about to hit the Prophet ﷺ, and Talha radiallahu anhu extended his hand and allowed that arrow to hit his hand. 
And because of this, uh, and because of this, he loses the ability to move his hand. You know, he becomes paralyzed in that hand. And so with one, you know, with ar one arm down, basically, he then takes his other arm and he puts the Prophet Sallallahu over his shoulder and guarded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and tried to escape the area where they were being attacked. You know, when he was finally able to escape to safety, he laid the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi down and then he himself fell unconscious because of all of his wounds. And so, um, and some, and when I was doing my research, there were um, some lectures that said like he had 24 wounds and some lectures that he, it was saying that he had 70 wounds, but still that's still more than one. That's still a lot of wounds to have on one person. So, you know, you can imagine why he fell unconscious. He had lost so much blood. He was, he was hurt really badly. And Abu Bakr anhu and Sa'ad anhu ran to the Prophet وسلم, when they heard and the Prophet وسلم, directed them to Anhu first. He said, no, take care of your, take care of him first. Right? The Prophet وسلم, was there and he was staring at Talha anhu and admiring the efforts that he put in. And the Prophet وسلم, he said something very special about Talha anhu. He said, whoever wants to see a martyr, a walking and living martyr, walking on his two feet, then let him look at Talha anhu and admire him. So can you imagine, he already had all those other nicknames, right? He had three other nicknames just for being generous, right? So there was Talhatul Khair, Talhatul Jud, Talhatul Fayad, and now he also gains another nickname, right? The walking Shaheed, the living martyr. And Abu Bakr, in fact, when he used to um, when he used to look back on the day of Uhud, he used to say the day of Uhud is the day of Talha, right? Because of how special the sacrifice of Talha anhu was of that day. So when we when we look back at the day of Uhud, the day that many people fled from the side of the Prophet وسلم, and we know that is it is the day of Talha radiallahu anhu because he was standing with the Prophet وسلم, shielding him and protecting him. And that was the thing about Talha radiallahu anhu. He was always the first one to volunteer himself, right? Whether it would be for sadaqah or, you know, for a uh, accommodating for other people or even like his life he would he would do things with their stand with excellence so now this brings us to our second um sahaba that we're going to be talking about today khadija bint khawalid khwalid so can someone tell me who she is Someone said Adam's wife, the Prophet's wife. Which Prophet? I want specific answers. The Prophet وسلم, Prophet Muhammad, yes, exactly, right? So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم's first wife, right? And, um, you know, she was, as my subtitle is saying, it's she was the first Muslim woman. And so she was the, she was, the first person to accept Islam, and she was one of the greatest Muslims the world has ever seen. You know, her actions, her thoughts and feelings were all inspired and guided by Islam. So it's safe to say that women should strive to emulate her behavior. You know, she was an image of faithfulness, you know, integrity, modesty, good manners and nobility. She was generous, she was wise and understanding nurtured in an atmosphere of wealth and luxury. And, you know, she was the mother of all believers. Khadija, you know, uh, she was born to Fatima bin Sa'id and Khawalid bin Asad, who was very, who was a very prosperous businessman. Thus, Khadija grew up in luxury. And we all know she was the Prophet Sallallahu first wife. And there are, you know, numerous stories and life lessons that we can learn from their marriage. However, today we're going to focus on how Khadija showed ihsan, showed excellence in her business dealings and in her character. Right. 
So Khadija de Lauranha was the OG boss lady, right? Hashtag boss lady and OG meaning the original, right? She was literally what we call a feminist today. She was the most successful businesswoman in Arabia at the time. She inherited the business from her father and she devoted all of her attention to building up the business, right? Her astuteness and business ability made her business one of the most widespread business among the Quraysh. And can someone tell me why that is such a big deal to have the biggest business amongst the Quraysh at that time? Why was that such a huge deal? The Quraysh had many caravans, yes. You become respected by everyone. They're a big clan, you get a lot of respect. She is a woman, there you go. She was a woman. So if you think about it, the Quraysh were, it was a patriarchy society, right? It was mostly dominated by men, right? Women wouldn't necessarily do those kinds of things. So the fact that she had the biggest business amongst the Quraysh said a lot, right? And, you know, at the time, she also had children from her previous marriages, so she divided her time between caring for her children and expanding her business at the same time. However, Khadija Radiallahu's business was hardly a one-woman company, right? So while she managed and approved all the business dealings, her policy was to employ hardworking and distinguished managers to deal on her behalf. So she would send these employees to travel far and wide on her behalf, exporting her goods as far as Syria. And so why do you think the Prophet Sallallahu ended up working for her? Based on the policy that I just told you about, you know, why, why did she want the Prophet Sallallahu to work for her? He was very honest. Thank you. It was really fast. He was, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu his nickname was Al-Amin. He was honest. He was truthful. And, you know, being a woman who had a business, she needed people that she could trust. She needed honest people that she could trust. And so when she heard about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, she, you know, she was just like, okay, yeah, I would love to work with this guy, you know, I wouldn't have to worry about anything. And she wouldn't have to worry about worry about being crossed over. You know, it was for this reason that she employed the Prophet Wasallam, and the success of her business depended on the integrity of her representatives and the Prophet Wasallam, as we had said before, and as you guys have all said, you know, he had a reputation of trustworthiness. The Prophet Wasallam, he worked for Khadija radiallahu anha for some time and eventually the two of them got married after Khadija radiallahu anha proposes to the Prophet So upon her marriage to Rasulullah the couple continued to run the business together and Khadija radiallahu anha was known for her generosity. She readily spent her wealth in the path of Islam and to aid the Muslims. She remained a stalwart supporter of the Prophet until her death sacrificing all worldly luxuries and quitting her business during the boycott of the Muslims. When she married the Prophet وسلم, she followed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rules and regulations regarding marriage and was the Prophet وسلم's biggest comfort. And we all know the story of the cave Hira, right? We all know that Angel Jibreel came down and he asked the Prophet وسلم, to read, right? Or commanded him to read, right? After Angel Jibreel left, the Prophet ﷺ was so shook that he ran back to Khadija anha and said those famous words, Samiduni, cover me, he said, right? And she did so. And now, like, think about it. Like, if my dad, you know, came from outside and he came up to my mom and like, hey, I saw a ghost outside, mom would be like, what are you talking about? You know, get it together. Like, are you, are you joking right now? You know, like, you got to think about like, how like it didn't make any sense to be seeing an angel and but like she was so calm and poised about it and you know he was scared so and he asked her to cover her and she did so and she calmed him down you know she reminded him that he was a good man that he was a man of peace and reconciliation that he was a man of truth and the soothing and encouraging words of sympathy and understanding from Khadija gave him immeasurable strength and confidence. 
Okay. And so Khadija radiallahu anha, you know, was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's rock, his main support. So when she passed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam grieved. He grieved so much to the point that the year of her death was called the year of sorrow. Right? You know, his wealthy wife gave her all generously to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? During the time, you know, all of Khadija radiallahu anha's wealth was spent in the way of Allah, helping to spread the message of her husband, helping to free slaves who had embraced Islam, and helping to feed and shelter the community of Muslims that slowly but surely began to grow in numbers and strength. And she also provided moral and emotional support. You know, she her house was a haven of peace for him as she took upon herself all of the responsibilities of running the house and bringing up four young daughters. Whenever he was abused وسلم, by the disbelievers, she provided moral support and unflagging faith. You know, she was there for him. She was there from like the thick through the thin, like she was there for it all. And she was great at everything that she did from running a business to being a mother and a wife to even like helping people, helping with the spreading of Islam. Like she was so great that Angel Jibreel السلام, descended from the heavens, giving her salam with greetings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself with glide tidings from her palace in Jannah. Right? Like subhanAllah, think about it. You know, she got greetings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She got salam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, right? And, you know, she was reminded of everything that was waiting for her in Jannah. And so, you know, both Talha ibn Abaydullah and Khadija bint Khawarez radiallahu anhu were just great people. And, you know, we've learned about all these sahabas from the past like eight to nine weeks and all of the all of them are obviously very great but you know they were genuinely great excellent people and everything that they did they did it with ihsan right they did it with excellence they did it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the main takeaway from today's program right ihsan being excellent and this brings us to a reflection so i ask you whenever you do something you know or whenever you give sadaqa, or whenever you're doing chores, or doing homework, or doing anything, how much are you putting into it? You know, how much ihsan is there in it? How much excellence is there in it? You know, and this is something that we can all work on, right? We can strive to be better. We can strive to make sure that whatever we do has excellence in it. Right, so you know, we're gonna do this together, right? We'll make a commitment from today onwards that whatever I do, whether big or small, I'm going to do with ihsan, with excellence, and trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us. All right, so take this moment to think and just everyone just write one thing that they are going to commit to from now on. Right. Uh from today onwards, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Like, what are you guys going to commit to to make excellent from now on? Give more sadaqah. Okay. Give more sadaqah. Uh, we have people watching the chat. So if we see anything inappropriate, they will flag you. And so just be mindful about what you guys are writing on the chat, please. Thank you. Reading Quran, even though I already memorized it. That's awesome. My prayers. Listening to my parents. Trying best in virtual school, that is a great, you know, great point. You know, not all of us will be going back to school in the same way that we are used to. And it's so easy for us to get lazy and to get distracted and to not want to do school. I mean, I was doing school this past summer online and it, I would fall asleep during my lectures. I would just go on Zoom and fall asleep. It was really bad. You know, I didn't learn anything. It was so bad. And so, like, you know, I will make that commitment with you to, from today onwards as well. You know, I'm not going to fall asleep in my classes next semester. You know, we'll be a better person. You know, these are all great things, right? And, you know, as I said before, it's, you know, whether, whether it's big or small, you just, you have to commit to do it with ihsan, with excellence. 
you know, and we, you know, trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will reward you because we see from Ibn Ubaidullah's story, we see from Khadija radiallahu anha's story that they were rewarded. They were, you know, of the best and they, you know, we're learning about them today and, you know, they didn't, they did small things and yes, they did some big things as well, but their small things are what led up to them being such great people. It just added on. So, okay. Um, so now we are going to talk about the name of Allah, Ra'uf al-Rahim, right? Um, does anyone have any idea what Ra'uf al-Rahim means? Okay, just to answer you guys' question, yes, there is a Kahoot. Um, it will be shortly after, and I hope you guys are paying attention because I, I feel like the questions are hard this time around. So be paying attention. Ra'uf Ra means the exalted, oh, merciful. Most merciful, could forgive something very polite. Merciful equals Rahim. So you guys are on the right track, right? So Ra'uf Rahim means the one who has pity on others and mercy, right? A Ra'uf, specifically a Ra'uf, means the one who has pity on others. And a Rahim, as we all know, means mercy, right? So pity is the intensification of mercy. And it has the same meaning as Rahim. But as we know, as we said, Rahim means mercy. Rahim means mercy towards to towards the believers, but a ra'uf is an intensified form, right? So if you want to put it on a scale, like, or yeah, on a scale, you can say like Rahim would be like the base and a ra'uf would be higher than that. It's an intensified version of Rahim. Right, so we are going to talk about the difference of their root words, which is rahma and rafa. Right, so rahma is just mercy, right, being handled with compassion and care. Right, and rafa is the highest form of mercy where you are warned of the con uh, consequences, right? And so the easiest example is when when there is a calamity that hits you. One who is merciful, Rahim, has mercy on you after the calamity, right? But Ra'uf is the one who is so merciful that, that he, his mercy extends before the calamity hits and involves him taking care of you and warning you so that a calamity does not hit, right? So to make things a little bit easier, right? A mother and her child. How many times has our mom have our moms asked us to grab a jacket before leaving the house, right? Because it's going to be cold later on. And half the time we don't even grab the jacket. We're just like, no, Ma, like it's okay. I don't need a jacket. I'm gonna be okay. And we leave the house. And then long story short, it's the end of the night and it's freezing, freezing cold outside, right? And they're just like, oh man, I wish I would have brought my jacket. Okay. So that's what this is. So um uh sorry, Rafa is when a mother is protective of her children and especially during the winter so that she dresses them in warm clothes so that they do not suffer from the cold, right? So she's saving them from the consequences of not wearing a jacket, right? So she's, yeah, so she's saving them of the consequence of not wearing the jacket. So that is Rafa. So whereas a mother whose heart aches because her child has become sick from not wearing a jacket, and she does everything to make sure that the child is in ease or, you know, uh, the child is not in pain, right? So giving the child medication, that's that's being merciful. That's Rahim, right? So Rafa is the highest form of mercy where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he protects his servants by warning them of the deeds and consequences, right? So his mercy is not only all encompassing, but a special kind reserved for the believers, but he is telling us that his warnings to us and his withholdings from us is from an intense mercy. He does not want us to go through the hurt and pain if he has not warned us, okay? So that is the difference between rah Rahmah and Rafa. And we are really good on time. I speak way too fast. 
So uh, to look, that basically, you know, ends the the lecture portion of our program today. So Jazakallahu Khair for listening uh, very intently. And I hope you guys were because um, we are going to play a quick round of Kahoot next. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that set up for you guys. All right, it looks like we are going to start soon. All right, we are starting now, inshallah. So what does the word Ihsan mean? Oneness of Allah, it's a river in Jannah, name of an angel or pure excellence. I feel like everyone should get this question correct because it's basically a freebie because everyone saw the answer from the previous time we tried playing the cahoots. Pure excellence. And some people still got it wrong. But yes, that was basically our theme for today. Pure excellence, ihsan, right? How Talha radiallahu anhu and Khadija radiallahu anha, they showed ihsan in everything that they did. All right, let's go to the next question now, inshallah. All right, we have Sidran in first place, Ertugal in second, and Atif 54 in third. Or actually, they're all tied for a thousand. Nasser and Fatma in second. All right, next question. Khadija de Allahu Anha grew up in luxury. True or false? The answer is true. Her dad was also a businessman and she actually inherited the business from him. All right. Sidra. Oh, Uga Buga. First place. I can't see who's in second place, but Erthrigal is in third. Miriam G in fourth and Sidra in fifth. All right. Uga Buga. Third question, true or false? Talha radiallahu anhu had a total of three nicknames. True or false? The answer is false, that he had a total of four nicknames, right? And to quickly say them, there was Talhat al-Khair, Talhat al-Jud, Talhat al-Fayyad, and then the fourth one being the living martyr. All right, Sidra is at first place. I can't see who's in second. Aisha Daji in third, Zara Khan in fourth, and I'm not going to pronounce that, but you are in fifth place. You guys are doing great, mashallah. Fourth question. Angel Jibra'il gave who the salam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with glide tidings for her palace in Jannah. Aisha radiallahu anha, Fatima radiallahu anha, Asiya alayhi salam, or Khadija radiallahu anha.
Khadija radiallahu anha. Um, yes, she was the only uh, option because she was the only person that we talked about today. All right. scoreboard all right so sidra is still at first place i still can't see who's at second sorry there's something blocking it Miriam g and third zara khan in fourth and don't know how to pronounce that you're back at fifth fifth question the name Ra'uf rahim means to have pity on others and mercy true or false True, right? As we said, Ra'uf is the part that means to have pity on others, and Rahim means mercy. Ahmed slash Sarah at first place now, second place, I cannot see you. Third place, I still cannot pronounce your name, but you guys are doing great. Sixth question, which is not a nickname of Talha radiallahu anhu? Talha the excellent. Talha the truthful, the living martyr, Talha the one who is excessively generous. I think you have to be really paying attention to answer this question. Talha the truthful. Correct. Okay, Ahmed and Sara still at first place. Second place, I cannot see you. And Sidra is coming back up at third place. Nice. Seventh question. Is Talha radiallahu anhu of the ten who are promised paradise? True, he is of the ten. Eighth question, Khadija anha was the first Muslim woman, true or false? The answer is true. She was the first Muslim woman um, to be. No, she was. So, what was the reason for Khadija had to employ Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in her business? He had a reputation of trustworthiness. He knew the desert well. He didn't mind traveling long distances, or he was good at business. So, think back to her policy on how she had people work for her and why she chose them. Yes, he had a reputation of trustworthiness. She needed people that she can trust to help run her business. All right, Ahmed and Sara still at top. The year that Khadija anha passed away was called the year of destiny, true or false?
false. It was called the year of sorrow. And in that year, um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his uncle Abu Talib also passed away. Question 11, who said this phrase? The day of Uhud is the day of Tulha. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, or Ali radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So this was a tricky one. Question 12, true or false? Talha, Talha radiallahu anhu's leg was paralyzed after the battle of Ahrad. True or false? The specific time where an arrow was about to hit the Prophet وسلم, and who extended a certain body limb to block the arrow. It was false. His arm was paralyzed. He stopped the arrow with his arm or hand. Question 13 Pity is the intensification of mercy. True or false? True, as we said, Ra'fa is higher than Rahma, it's more intensified. 14, which mercy extends before a calamity hits? Rahma, Rasul, Riyadh, or Ra'fa? So think back to the mother and the child example that I gave you guys. What does a mother do? Or what does she tell her child to do before going outside? Rafa, right. You know, you're you're trying to save your child from the consequence of what was gonna happen. True or false? Was Talha radiallahu anhu of the five who converted at the hands of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu? The answer is true. Remember, he came back from Syria and he went straight to Abu Bakr to ask him what was going on. What does this word mean? Oh, okay, there we go. What does this word mean? Anar. Earth, water, air, fire. Fire. Good. Question 17. What was Khadija has wealth used for? To spread this message of Islam, to help free slaves, to help feel, uh, feed sorry, and shelter the Muslim community, or all of the above? All of the above, correct. 
18, the Muslims lost the Battle of Uhud. True or false? True, we, we won the Battle of Badr, but we lost the Battle of Ahad. From now on, I'm going to do my actions with this, and this goes back to the commitment that you guys have made today, is that I'm going to do my actions with reluctance, Toba, Insan, or Ihsan. And everyone, everyone should get this question correct. There's no way you can get this question wrong. Ihsan, oh my God, of course there are going to still be some people who choose the wrong one. Last question, true or false? Ashara Mubashara means the 10 promised Jannah, true or false? True. Ashura Mubashra pertains to the people, the 10 people who are promised Jannah. All right, that's the end of our Kahoot. But Mash got third place. I can't pronounce that. Second place and first place. So we have Ahmed slash Sara. Oh, congratulations, you guys. You guys did really, really well. Thank you guys so much for being so patient with us. I know the Kahoot, we started a lot earlier, but it wasn't working. So thank you for sticking around and thank you for sticking up for the whole entire program for the whole entire series. Uh, I hope you guys learned something today and I hope you guys, as well as myself, will follow through on the, on the commitments that we made today. I'm gonna give it back over to our moderator, Aisha, to start wrapping this up, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Sister Muniba, for such an amazing session, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, it was really nice to learn about Talha radiyahu ta'ala and Khadija radiyahu ta'ala, the mother of believers. Make sure to please join the next session on next Friday. Inshallah, inshallah. I'll conclude the session with a surah and a dua. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. والأسر إن الإنسان لا في خص إن الذين عاملوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم ما وبهمك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك وتوب عليك. See you next Friday in our next class. Assalamu alaikum.